Good afternoon, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with a special Hurricane Irma video discussion based on the 5 p.m. advisory package from the National Hurricane Center. And I'm putting this together at a few minutes before 5 Eastern Time, the latest on Irma. And we're going to really focus on the Northeast Caribbean Sea, the islands of the U.S. British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, as well as the Northern Leeward Islands in this particular discussion not ignoring what's going on or potentially going on downstream, but right now the hammer is getting ready to fall on the good people of the Northeast Caribbean, and uh, we need to focus on that. So the headline, Irma strengthens. It's now a Category 4 with winds of 130 miles per hour, and, and this is real serious now. We're talking about wind damage that can destroy buildings and really lay waste to the infrastructure down there, so you can't take this lightly any longer. You need to focus on preparing and not trying to wait and see. I can't emphasize that enough. People just naturally want to wait because they don't think that it is going to come to them. And what are we talking about when we say, well, is the hurricane coming this way? Is it coming our way? What is it? Well, most people think of it as being the I. Is the I forecast to come over me? And that doesn't matter any longer when you're talking about especially a system with 130 mile per hour winds. It honestly doesn't matter when you're talking about a tropical storm. Look what happened with Harvey. Obviously, they are large weather systems, so do not think of this as just a dot on the map. And even though you may not see 130 mile per hour winds, uh, this is going to be a very damaging event for the area. And where the core passes is where the worst of the conditions are likely to be felt. Pressure down to 944 millibars, and it is moving to the west. Uh, at uh, 13 miles per hour. And you notice that compass heading there, 265 degrees. So due west is basically 270, or a straight line, and 265, I don't know if that's the exact angle, but you get the idea. It's just still right there, that line right there, a little bit south of west. That's the point here. But we're making up some ground here just a little bit. Well, not making it up quite yet. Uh, it's a lot better than 255, let's just say that. We're not seeing a, a track that's like west-southwest like that. We want it back up here to the west, and then eventually we want that number to start reading in the 270s and 280s, and maybe we can avoid a direct hit on the islands. All right. So in these intermediate advisories that come out, and they will be every three hours from the National Hurricane Center, so the next one is going to be at 8 p.m. AST, or Eastern Daylight Time. Look at that present movement part, and let's watch that number, 265, and see if we can get it to increase. You know, nothing we can do about it, but we can certainly hope. The warnings are in effect for Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla, Montserrat, St. Kitts, and Nevis, Saba, St. Eustatius, and St. Martin, uh, St. Martin and St. Bartholomew. It's just, you know, coming. It's time, all right? And then you got the uh, Hurricane Watch for Guadalupe. And in the watch area, that now includes the British, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Vieques, and Calabria. Uh, so the watch warning information contained in here. Uh, read it in the public advisory if you want to have more detailed information. It's at hurricanes with an S, hurricanes.gov, hurricanes.gov. What I want to show you is very important right here, and that is the hurricane force winds and the tropical storm force winds, uh, what we call the, the wind radii, and that has expanded now the hurricane force winds to 40 miles from the center, Tropical storm force winds outward up to 140 miles from the center. So this is why you can't be second-guessing and hoping that it doesn't come near you, because when you're talking about it, a reminder, you're talking about the eye. But you really need to be thinking about as a circle 140 miles uh, from the center. Well, you, know, you talk about how far away are you from that center? And 140 miles from the center, you have tropical storm force winds. So from that moment on, if you live in Anguilla, uh, hopefully I say that right, and, uh, and it's approaching and it's 140 miles away, the center, you should start seeing tropical storm force winds, and your time to prepare basically ran out. So this is another thing we need to pay attention to on these advisories as they come out. All right? Storm surge, eh, six to nine feet in some areas, and that is a, a problem, but it is the big, big battering uh, destructive waves that are going to come in as well. Uh, flooding in some of the mountainous areas down there, and um, you know the deepest water along the coast in the areas of onshore flow. 
and you get these coves and these little bays, that's where the water can focus. So storm surge is a major issue with this, uh, as well as the wind, and I think the wind in this case could be a bigger issue than the surge because of how intense Irma has become. All right, so pay attention to that. And then rainfall, three to six inches, and 10 inches in some areas, and again, life-threatening flash floods and mudslides. And of course, the swells are gonna start coming out from this more and more towards the land areas, and that will eventually include Florida and portions of the southeast coast. Like I said, I wanna focus on the Northeast Caribbean over here because this is where the warnings are up. Obviously, there's a lot of interest downstream from this, and we will cover that in another update late tonight towards one o'clock in the morning Eastern time. But right now, my concern is for this area right down here because this is where the worst of the conditions are going to be felt first and foremost. So this is the five-day track chart. And I want to zoom in on this and show you this is from our partner. We work with Hurricane Pro. It's an app. And this is a nice zoomed-in area showing you the cone of uncertainty and the forecast points over the next few days. And this makes this a good example that each of these are the forecast positions over the next few days, these purple dots that I've covered with orange there, but now you can see them all overlay them with a opaque yellow line. Uh, those are just dots on a map plotting the center of the eye. Notice that the line here, and this would be the center line of the track if you connected the dots, goes almost right over St. Martin. Now, you might say, oh, thank goodness, it goes just north of the island. We're going to be okay. Incorrect. Uh, obviously, it's going to wobble from time to time. It doesn't necessarily look like that. But hurricanes don't travel on a straight line. And the hurricane force winds extend out 30 to 40 miles from the center. Right now, it says 40. And so, I don't know exactly what 40 miles looks like on this particular map. But if you're in St. Martin, and the eye is right here, the center of the hurricane. Well, if the eye is 15 miles wide, or 20 miles wide, that's going to push the hurricane force winds out in a larger area, and St. Martin would definitely be in that. So this gives you an idea of the areas that could be threatened. Uh, you've got these other islands. There's one in here. There's St. John's. And you can see this is the area that the core is expected to pass through. But this can change, and you can have wobbles north or south, and this is why you can't just wait and see. Well, I'm going to wait and see what happens. I'm going to wait until about 12 hours ahead of time. Uh, honestly, you cannot do that. Hurricane Maryland in 1995, a direct hit across the region. Uh, and that was a generational hurricane. That was a huge event. A lot of people left after that. New people have moved in. They don't have any hurricane experience at all. And so this could be very problematic. Be very, very mindful of what is coming. And uh, if we look at the satellite animation, Irma definitely getting better organized. Uh, this is not a look that I like to see, this round buzzsaw appearance with the eye being surrounded more and more by colder cloud tops there, that red indicating higher cloud tops in the atmosphere. It's intensifying as I speak. And now you can see that the islands are starting to come into focus here. And as I do these updates over the next 24 to 48 hours, it's just going to get more and more concerning as this gets closer. So time is against you now if you haven't done anything. I'm telling you, please listen to what I'm saying about that. You've got to do something to save your butt first, your property second. Seriously. Very, very serious situation with this hurricane. So uh, this map from our app, Hurricane Impact, shows the plot over the uh, upper ocean heat content and I just I hate to say it but we can't sugarcoat this it's going to be moving over warmer and warmer upper ocean heat content and what I'm trying to do is to motivate you to take preparedness action I want you to save your rear, your rear end first all right and the rest of you and then worry about your property and you need to be motivated here and not wait this out don't just hang out and hope that it'll be okay hope by itself will not make Irma go away or provide you with a safe uh, plan. You know, it's fine to hope and pray, but that by itself is usually not good enough. And as this goes on more to the west northwest with time, the potential for it to reach category five intensity is absolutely on the table. And, you know, if you've followed me for years, I don't talk about that lightly. This needs to be watched and it needs to be respected. If you don't, it could kill you. Uh, just looking at the map of uh, from Google here of what's down here, 
and you can see the U.S. British Virgin Islands uh, up here. This is going to be one of the closer ones to the current forecast track, as well as Anguilla. And you guys need to be ready for this. The U.S. Virgin Islands a little farther to the south and west, thank goodness, but you still could be brushed with hurricane force winds. I'm going to work on for my later update tonight producing a graphic that shows that uh, on this map. I just need to work in Photoshop and get my geography skills out and I can produce that. Don't worry about it. I know exactly how to do it and I'm going to get that ready so that I can show you the general extent of the wind field and a scenario of what to expect over the next couple of days as this passes into and through your area. All right? Well, that's what I know for now. Obviously, a lot of interest downstream, like I said. We can deal with that later. Right now, just, you know, prepare. Uh, get a little extra water, fill a gas can. If you haven't taken that generator to the small engine repair shop to make sure it's in top running condition, you better do it soon. And if it's not for Irma, we still have almost half the hurricane season in front of us. We're not even to the peak of the season, which is traditionally September 10th or so. And I know it sounds like all bad news, but you know what? Sometimes it is bad news, and we have to rely on our instinct and our common sense to hopefully get through some of this and not make mistakes. And down in the uh, Northeast Caribbean, uh, my message is certainly take this very seriously. Do what you can to prepare, and I'll do what I can to provide uh, the information that I can to you in that region. Okie doke. Well, that's it for me for this afternoon. I'll be working on things for a late-night post uh, have it on by 1 a.m. Eastern Time tonight. I'm Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks a million, as always, for your time and attention, and I'll be back with another discussion, like I said, between midnight and 1 a.m. Uh, tonight into tomorrow morning.